Hey guys, Higgy Pop here in the Hawk's Nest. Whew, I'm a little under the weather. You gotta bear with me. I got a bad head cold, but uh, look at this draw. Look at the cabinet. I got a little Hawkman art on there coming right along. This thing is filled to the brim. Filled to the brim. Yeah. So, I'm sick. I'm sick. I wanted to do a video yesterday. There's my small Hawkman. And here's my, the Hawkman I go out in the town with. We hang out. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Ooh, he's all oiled up. So, yeah, I don't know. I got a head cold. I wanted to do a video yesterday, but I was under the weather, man. Ugh, not feeling good. And, um, but I got to do a video. I want to talk to you people. So I'm going to suck it up, buttercup. Yeah. Yesterday was Ash Wednesday. I went to church, got the ashes. And I was going to do a video, but I was just like, you know, I don't know. So, uh, Thanks for joining me. You guys are the best. And uh, I'm going to show you some books. You just relax. We're going to have a good old time. Yeah, so um, it feels good to be back home. I tell you, going down, I went down the second alarm clock. So I was like this. And they're like, hug, hug. and I was like, yes. And I was like, good to be back home. High fives all around. Oh, it was a good time. I mean, this, I, I tell you, nothing against New York comic shops, but I just love second alarm comics. I mean, not just because if I fall off my front steps, I land in, in the front parking lot. I mean, it's real close. The guys are great. Jim, the owner, Mike, everyone's great down there. But there's gems in there, baby. There's gems. Oh, I don't feel good. Um, I found all sorts of fun stuff. If you just dig around, there's uh, gems down there at Second Alarm's got everything. I was going to have some uh, Hawk Woman make me some homemade soup. But I, I had married... The only Italian woman that doesn't know how to cook. Uh, she 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 came a long way. She cooks for me, but last time she made me alphabet soup and I spelled out help. I was like, no thanks. I mean, when we eat dinner, we pray after we eat. That's how bad it gets. I'm telling you. But she she does good. She does good. So I was digging around down in there, right? And I found some cool stuff. Just do a little digging. This is um. ACG Comics. This is issue number 113, Adventures into the Unknown. Check it out. Isn't it cool, man? This is Ogden, Ogden and Whitney do this cover, and they do a lot of the art and story inside. There's a couple stories in this. And this is like a, a hidden city or a ghost city. What's that one? Phantom City. The writer is uh, Greg Olivetti. He's a paisan. You know why uh, Italian kids always want to grow a mustache? They want to look like their mothers. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yep. And, uh, don't worry. I don't need no soup. They feel better. I'm like Rocky. I'll be, uh, I'll be, uh, eating lightning and crapping thunder before you know it. Rock, you're, you're a killer kid. You're a fighting machine. So this is cool. There's a goddess of fate is a, a story in there. It's like the third story by John Forte. And it's cool. This is back in uh, January of 1960. Those were the days. So I saw this. He had a couple of these. He had a couple of these in there. And uh, he never got a chance to look at them and price them or nothing. But I looked at them first. So I was happy to get this. And I had my lists with me. So I needed, for my West Coast Avengers run, I needed this. Issue number 23. So this is a cool cover. This is a cool cover. It says, Vengeance Cries the Mockingbird. So this is issue number 23. And that fills a little hole. A little hole. Yeah. Hawkwoman, she may not be a, uh, the best cook, but she has a lot of good, she's got a lot of great qualities. Like, you should have seen her in New York. People come up to me bumming money from me all the time. And, but she turns the tables on these guys. She is fantastic at, like, uh, just, you know, they're like, yeah, you, could, you know, making a deal and stuff. She just, oh. if you're going to go, like, uh, antique shopping and stuff, that's the person you want to take with you. They end up owing her money by the time they, they, she leaves the store. So they're like, what just happened? I lost money. She's like Bugs Bunny. She's like, one for you, one, two, three for me. One for you, one, two, three for me. And, oh, yeah, baby. I saw this. I just got all happy. Come on, girl, with a song that we're singing. Boom, you look good, happy. The Potridge family. 
This is the second partridge family that I have. All right. Um, I have. Uh, I do have a uh, David Cassidy Charlin. Just by Charlin, Charlin. We're doing a Charlin. All right. This is a uh, Don Sherwood. He does everything. Draws it. Writes it. He printed it. He put the staples in it. He made himself breakfast. He he cured world hunger. He he did it all. And um, this is issue number three. And uh, this is great. This is fun. You want to know why? Ask me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ask Higgy. Because they got all their like their their uh their signs. Like, hey, what's your sign? Hey, yo, I'm Aquarius. Check it out. This is issue number three of the Potridge family. All right. What's the other issue I have? Hold on. Hold on. Hold everything. I'll be right there. Coming. Yes. Found it. I am getting organized down here. I'll tell you that. I have issue number 12. Imagine that. Of the Partridge family. Nice yellow cover. Look at them all happy. What a nice little family. Little Danny Bonaducci, that little uh, red-headed stepchild. Okay, and this is my David Cassidy, issue number one. You guys are jealous. I know you are. It's all right. Say it. Admit it. Get it off your chest. All right, let me show you. They go through everybody's sign in here. I saw the sign, and it opened up my eyes. All right. Here's Dave. He's a Sagittarius. He likes long walks on the beach. And... Here is little Suzanne. She was born March 6th, and she's a Pisces. Little Susie. Little Susie's on the up. Uh, we're a dog. What's the dog's name? What's the dog sign? I need to notice. All right, here's Danny, that red-headed son of a gun. All right, he's a, he's a, this is Danny, and he is a Leo. Like a lion, you know what I'm saying? And here is Taurus. His Jeremy is a Taurus. He's the drummer, you see, the backbeat. Danny's a bass player like Shannon, solid force bend. Shannon, the bass cannon. And here's Susan. Oh, yeah, Susan. She's a Sagittarius. She likes Higgy Pop and taking long walks on the beach with Higgy Pop. And here's our boy, David. Um, he is an Aries. All right. Now let's see what mom is. Shirley. All right. She's an Aries also. What a great book. Isn't that fun? The Partridge Family, issue number three. All right, what else? Wait till you see the fun stuff I got. All right. Now, look at this Star Trek book. I found two of these. These are Whitman variants, and these are like hard, uh, like a little cardboard covered, and they're a little thick. They're like a, like a fatty, all right? And this is a Star Trek. This is like 1970-something. Let me check it out. I'm very weak. My eyes are weak. My legs are weak. Women weak in legs, Rock. Hey, yo, Mick, I really like this one. We'll have her trade you then. All right, you open it up. We have 1976. We were picking up sticks. And the art in here is clean, crisp, and beautiful. The coloring is fantastic. I mean, check it out. I mean, we're talking Captain's Log. Spock's like, highly illogical. My ears are tremendous. Yes. <laughs> Captain Captain Kirk's like, hey Spock, you get uh, HBO with those things. I mean, come on, man, what a great book. I said, how much for this? And then I found another one. They're not numbered or anything. It has a price of sixty nine cents on it. These are great. Come on, look at Scotty. Is that Scotty? Holy Magara! She can't take much more, Captain. So, yeah. You know, a hawk woman, she does have her weaknesses, too. And we found this out again when we're in New York. She does not like elevators, all right? We went to this thing called The Edge. It was, I forgot what building it was. We we're up at, like, the millionth floor, and there's a glass floor, and you can walk on it, and you can see the street right below you. She couldn't do that either. I did it because I'm brave. I'm brave and bold. And um, she doesn't like elevators. Freaks her out. I don't like elevators because uh, things called elevator farts. Did you ever have 
someone goes in an elevator, rips a fart, and he's he's he gone. I mean, I'm talking some. I'm talking a fart that would end a marriage. I mean, I'm like, what did this guy eat? So this is what I got this week from DC Comics. I picked up Green Lantern issue number eight. How my pal, this is really good. I mean, I mean, look at the, he's he looks crazy. He looks crazy. But um, that that he's in the second half of the book, and um. Kyle is in like the last three pages, a little story of Kyle's coming back. How this Hal story is really good. It uh it kind of meanders, but it's fun. It's a fun read. He's trying to leave Earth's atmosphere. He can't. With the ring he has that he created, he cannot leave Earth's atmosphere. And he has a buddy. The buddy is purple. His name is Razor. He was another uh lantern. But someone's killing all the power batteries for all the, the lantern rings. The uh, orange ring, the purple ring, the green lantern ring. So he wants to tell someone about it, but he can't leave Earth's atmosphere. And uh, the what they the, the the collection of planet leaders, whatever they called, I forgot what it's called. They won't let him leave. So he's battling all sorts of people. A lot going on. He meets up with Carol Ferris, and you know they're like, "I love you, but I can't say it." No, no, you say it first. No. Good stuff, though. Good stuff. And I picked up Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream, ba 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 ba. So I gotta watch my mom all weekend, which is fine. And um, so uh, I don't want to get her sick. I don't want to get her sick, you know. So I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll like this. This may freak my mom out. I'd be like, Hey, mom, what do you want to do today? <sighs> I'm tired. But, so that's why I wanted to make a video, talk to you guys, because I'm going to be a little uh, preoccupied this weekend. So, Mr. Sandman, Sandman, issue number five. Good story, good story. And uh, art is still great. Story's great. Vendetti, I believe, right? And, uh, and, and Rosmo, Vendetti, hey, Rosmo. And uh, they do a great job. Sandman is, uh, he went into some military base. He was on a mission. Last we left Sandman, he pitched, pitched some guy out a window and he, he landed on a taxi cab and died. The cops are interrogating him. He's like, I gotta go. I got more people. I got more butts to kick. And he goes to his uh, military base to track down his notebook with all the gas gun inf info on it. And uh, he, he kidnaps that one-armed general, ties him to a chair, and he interrogates him. All good stuff. Good stuff going on, man. It doesn't really go anywhere. This is like a, a lot of these books. It's a good read, but you're still in the same spot when you put it down. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But this is fun. Believe it or not, believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Action Comics. Issue number 1062, reporting for duty. Bizarro no like. That means Bizarro like. And Bizarro says, live. But that means die. All right, this is Superman. Metropolis is now Bizarroville, all right? Because Bizarro got into his hands into some magic and he turned Metropolis into Bizarro. Everyone's a Bizarro. Lois is a Bizarro. She's like, me no like you, Clark. Me want to divorce you all over again. That kind of stuff. He's like, whoa. So he, he turns into a Bizarro, but he fights it. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm not a Bizarro. I am a Bizarro. But does that mean I am a Bizarro? But I'm not a Bizarro. What does that mean? So anyways, he snaps out of it, but it's wearing on him. It's wearing on him. And now uh, everything's, not even Metropolis, everything. Gotham City's a Bizarro. And but there's no one he could talk to because everyone's a bizarro. But you know what? Because it turns everyone backwards. So he goes at the end. I gotta tell you a secret. He talks to he finds the Joker because Joker is sane. He's very a sane human being now because he got affected by the bizarro serum. So it turned him from crazy into sane. So Joker's like, I know how to snap it at this world. I, I'll save the world. So Superman and Joker looks like they're gonna team up. Me no like. Yes. So. I want to talk to you guys on Valentine's Day, but I was just too sick. I was sick. I was. Yeah. So, uh, so, happy Valentine's Day. Hey, I'll be your Valentine. My Valentine is Hawkman. Hawkman, love ya. Love, he's, he's like a Cupid. He's got wings, right? Anyways, here's some little romance books. I like a lot of the DC romances. Marvel has some good romance books. Charlton. This is uh, Jan uh, June of 68. We're closing the gate. And she's all upset. <laughs> he he was only he was the only boy I ever really loved. And I threw him into her arms. Well, you're dressing like a hussy. 
All right. And then here is a um, a romance counselor. You write in these all these little girls write into this romance counselor in this page, and the romance counselor's name is Julia Roberts. In 1968. Where did Julia Roberts get her name? Right here. All right. That's what I'm talking about. I'll show you. I'll show you. I love these covers on these romance books. Where's this? Isn't uh, this book's in a condition of whoa plus? All right. I'm not a big collector of the romance books, but if they grab my eye, where's Julia Roberts? Here's the picture that's on the cover. Here it is. Check it out. Julia Roberts, Romance Counselor. Huh? What do you think? A little detective work, huh? Dear Miss Roberts, last summer at camp. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That's a hot one. Last summer at band camp. What'd you think of those Star Trek books, man, huh? I hurt my thumb. I hurt this finger. I, I got a lot of problems here. All right, DC, young love, young love, baby. The agony and ecstasy of young love. Let me grow up. When I look at you, I want to throw up. All right, this is September of 75. A little fun in the swimming pool. No diving. All right, here's a little Charlton, Charlton, soap opera love. Oh, yeah. Is this issue number one? Bing, 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 bing. All right, February of 1983. Oh, look at me. This is issue number love, uh, number one of Soap Opera Love. Love Brokers. They're up to a little devil's work there, huh? What are you doing there? Gonna take the bed for a ride, you know what I'm saying? All right. All new Love Diary, issue number 100. I got this the other day. Oh, yeah, baby. And, uh... What do you think? What do you think? A little Charlin. Here's a more, another DC, Girls Romances. This is issue number 158. If you love me, baby, you'll come away with me now. What shall I do? If only I could trust him. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Don Heck and Dick Giordano do the cover. Check it. This is April 71. She's got her go-go boots. These boots were made for walking, and that's what they're going to do. And I got one from Marvel I want to show you. This is issue number 31 of Our Love Story. Tales of romance torn from the pages of real life. I told you before, and I mean it. Stay away from that boy. Mm -hmm. Looks like she wants to go to the softball game with her. Yeah. And Gene Colan and John Costanza are on the cover. All right. And actually, Robert Kaniger writes this. I mean, it's not like he's uh, writing a... Uh, the enemy ace. He's writing romance stories. He does it all, baby. He does it all. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I struggled through work today, man. I, I didn't feel good. This is issue number 123, Young Love, by DC Comics. And Walt Simonson's on the cover. All right? And uh, Nick Cuddy is the writer. Vince Coletta does the inks. Bill Draw does all the art inside. All right. Got a couple more. Here's a 20 center. Nice yellow cover. Girls Love by DC Comics. Issue number 175. Can this romance be saved? Your answers win prizes. All right. This is December of 72. Cuckoo Kachu. She's angry. This guy, he's like, I got a vest and it's furry. He's got a furry vest on. Frankenstein wears a furry vest. What's this? This is thrown in there. Oh, I've been reading Ghost Rider. I've been reading Ghost Rider. I read issue number 24. All right. And 25. Good stuff. It's just you know, random stuff I'm picking up and reading. Oh, yeah, baby. And what else? Have I? Okay. I've been trying to read this. I'm trying to put together my Red Wolf run. This is issue number two. I have issue number one over there. Here's issue number five. I'm missing three and four. Close the door. And here's issue... I got two copies of five. Get up, you old owl hoot. And here's issue number eight. We're coming to America. Here's issue number nine. 
All right, it's Ron Wilson and John Romita. You like Romita Coladas? And uh, oh, so that Neil Diamond uh, play was great. Man, the kids sang just like Neil Diamond back in the day. And that's what it was about. It was about Neil Diamond coming to terms with why, because he all he did was love performing. And what it comes down to is he can't perform his music anymore, so he's all depressed. And that's how it starts. He's an old man talking to a, a psychiatrist, a shrink. And, um, and the younger actor is playing Neil Diamond as a younger man. You know, Neil Diamond, classic. He sings like a, a like a, he's got that voice, you know? Like he sings like a walking a ashtray. Perfect. Sultry. All right. Let's look at some stuff. Oh, I, I got a surprise. I'm going to do a big interview today. Big interview, all right? Real quick, real quick. Big surprise. This is my favorite comic book artist, and I know it's a couple favorites of uh, some of my friends out there. Shannon. All right. Mr. Kuber, I'm so glad you could join me today. Thank you, thank you. I mean, I just want to ask you a few questions. This guy is fantastic. He won an award, Mr. Kuber, in, um... Oh, right here. You won... The Eisner Award for this cover right here. This is Brave and the Bold, issue number 42, I believe. What do you think? This is, um, this is, uh, the Dragonfly Raiders book that you did for Brave and the Bold, and it's fantastic. And it's, uh, one of the first Brave and Bolds I got because of Hawkman, and you are one of my, you're my, you're my hero, buddy. And, uh, you're the best. And, um, you did so much war comics, and uh, you and uh, everyone. I mean, you you were with, with the best. You were with Jack Kirby. You won the Jack Kirby Award back in uh, back in the summer of I don't know when, but you won that. And Neil uh, Adams once said that um, he said it's one thing to be a comic book artist about you. He's saying this. It said it's one thing to be a comic book artist, and it's another thing to be a man and a comic book artist. And that is Joe Kubert. That's what he said. Mr. Kubert, I just want to say it's an honor. And um, I asked you, I mean, you had a big break when you were 12 years old. You started, you started doing professional drawing. And, uh, and they were publishing your art as a 12-year-old. At 11 years old, you went into the big city by yourself. And, uh, I mean, it's, you gotta, it's huge. And that's a, just a story that can't happen these days. And... Uh, I remember coming to you when I was about 11 or 12 years old, and I, I don't know if you remember this. I said, will you be my father? And you said no. All right? So I don't hold any grudges, and I don't blame you. I know your sons look, both looked at you and said, don't do it, Dad. But I know you don't have any arms. How do you draw? Anyways, Mr. Kuber, it's an honor, and uh, that's all I want to say. That your publicist is waving me off here. All right, I'm sorry. If I offend... Thanks for uh, coming down to the Hawk's Nest, and it's an honor. Thank you. I love your headband. Fantastic. All right. Mr. Kubert, everybody. All right, let's look at something. I got to look at something. Let's look at... Uh, I heard that uh, James Gunn... This is a rumor I heard. Actually, he called me. He said uh, Captain Adam might uh, make an appearance in some upcoming... Uh, DC films or shows. I'm not sure which one. But um, let's go over some Captain Adam. Mr. Nathaniel Adams. And uh, let's, start, let's start with... Uh, this is Charlton's version. All right. This is a modern uh, reprint. And uh, classic, classic stuff. I don't have any... Uh, Little Blue Beetle story. I don't have any um, Charlton, Captain Adams. Here he is. Let's see. Let's see. I have the whole run. Issue number one, Captain Adam. After they blow him to bits, the adventure begins. All right. He was being court-martialed by the Air Force. He's a, uh, in the Air Force, and he volunteered to get out of trouble to do this experiment. And uh, it's crazy. And the story goes on and on and on. He's a great character. He was in the Justice League, all sorts of versions of the Justice League. And uh, I love him. Super powerful. Super powerful. Issue number one. 
Issue number, I got another, issue number one. Issue number two. Who's doing this? I don't know. By Carrie Bates and Pat Broderick. Pat Broderick. Issue number three. Secret or lie. The three Captain Adams. There they are. Boom and boom in his chest. All right. I think the biggest love story in comic books is Hawkman and Hawkwoman. Issue number four. If you want to read a great, a great love story, I think it's a brightest day where um, uh, Hawkman and Hawkwoman are... Someone's collecting all their skeletons of all their past lives, and they're building a, 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 like a stargate with them. And it's uh, the guy that kills them all the time, Hathset or something like that. I forgot his name. Issue number five versus Firestorm, the nuclear man. Nuclear. Great stuff. Issue number six. Check it out. Check it out. And um, and they're, they're, they're always... They're in complete love. They're always smoochy, smoochy. And, uh... But when they always become in love, that's when they end up dying soon after. But they're like, we're not, we're not running from this anymore. So they end up... They track down the people that are getting all the skeletons. And they find the guy... And uh, they go through the Stargate to follow them. They're like, they're, they're like, we're following this through till the end. Issue number seven. And they end up in a crazy parallel world. Issue number eight. And uh, Lion's Mane is in there. All these other animal uh, avatars are there. And, the, and it, it Shire, uh, Hawkwoman gets kidnapped. And uh, Hawkman goes mental. He goes mental. Issue number nine. Look at that. That's the villain guy. I forgot his name. Black Bolt, maybe? Issue number 10. Captain Adam is not in this comic book. Let's get it. And when he absorbs what happens later on after this series a lot, mostly... He absorbs atomic bombs, like explosions, and when it, when that happens, he gets thrown through uh, time and space, and he, he wakes up. He could be anywhere in time and space. Those are great stories. Now him and Firestorm are buddies. It's good cover. Issue number 12. This is the first appearance of Major Force. He's a jerk. Issue number 13. He's boozing. Partying. Like a Super Bowl party. I hate these Super Bowl people, man. These people, this is like, it's like I mean, I, I played football for years, right? And people are always like, yeah, these are guys that, are, that root for the team. We, we, sh oh, we, we went down the field and then we didn't score. We just, it's like, what's this we stuff? What, would you turn French? I don't see you wearing cleats. Issue number 14, Nightshade. There she is. Another Charlin character. Issue number 15. There he is, Major Force. He's purple with a flat top. Yep. Issue number 16. Guest starring the Justice League. There they are. Booster Gold. Mr. Miracle. No offense there, uh, the Cuber family. Your father was a great man. Loved him. Still love him to this day. My favorite comic book artist. Issue number 17. There he is, the Swamp Thing. What a cover, man. Look at that. All right, issue number 18. Have you seen this man? Yeah, so Hawkwoman doesn't like elevators. Elevators, this, yeah, listen to this. When I was a kid, I think I was like, 
The first time I saw an elevator, it blew my mind. I thought it was <laughs> like a Shazam machine, Captain Marvel. I was sitting, I was downtown New Haven. I was with my mother. And I was sitting on, on the thing. I was go, waiting to go to a doctor's office. I was on like the fourth floor. And we're sitting there. And I see the elevator. I never saw an elevator before. The elevator door is open. And a, a, a little boy and his sister walk into the elevator. The door is closed. Then a, a couple seconds go by. The door opens. And a big muscular guy walks out with an with a adult woman. And I was like, that that might... That <laughs> that elevator just turned that that kid into a muscular man. I was like, "Get me on that elevator!" I got in there. I was like, "I was like, Shazam!" It didn't work. This is issue number nineteen. I was so disappointed. Issue number twenty: Captain Adam and Blue Beetle, friends or foes? They're buddies. They're buddies. Don't let them fool you. Issue number twenty-one. He's got an Uzi. Uzis were big back in the eighties. Ah, oh, you weren't you weren't tough if it, unless you had an Uzi. I've been read. I read this a long time ago. All right, issue number twenty-two. The Phantom Lady, and I don't know who that is. I don't know. Turn on your hot light. Let it shine wherever you go. That was Neil Diamond doing the song for E.T., the movie. Issue number 23. I got two copies of 23. Issue number 24, close the door. Captain Adams, sir. Look at the whole league. Look at the whole DC family. They're like, aye, aye, Captain. This is part of it, the invasion, the invasion storyline. Captain Adam played a huge role in that. Got everyone in there. Martian Manhunter. Oh, yeah, baby. Guy Gardner. Animal Man's back there. Oh, Dead Man's back there in the back row. Our Man's in the back row. Oh, my God. Love it. Love it. Issue number 26. The Justice League is on to you and your lies, Captain Adam. Now we want the truth. All of it. They're blasting them. They're mad. Issue number 27. File two of three. But which is the real Captain Adam? Issue number 28. File three of three. This is top secret. This is all top secret. All right, what do we got here? To be or not to be? Issue number 29. That is the question. I'm a philosopher. Why? Issue number 30. This is the uh, Janus direct director, directive, I mean. That storyline went through the Suicide Squad. There's a Black Manta. Oh, yeah, man. Look at him. Look at him go. Issue number 31, maybe coming to Russia wasn't such a good idea. The Reds. Let's see, what do we got here? Issue number 32, there is pain and then there is fear. And there is the question, what am I? Uh-oh, uh-oh, issue number 33. Mr. Grumpy Pants. I'm Batman. This is the building I stand on. What are you doing here? This is the building I stand on looking grumpy. Issue number 35. They can't believe it. Neither will you. I can't believe it's not butter. At last, the secret of the Silver Shield. Issue number 36, picking up sticks. Crazy, crazy. Issue number 37, 
overload. He's sucking up all the radiation. Issue number 38. He must do the impossible. That's the black racer. He's a new god of death. A lot of fun in this series. A lot of people coming and going. Issue number 39. I'll rip out your spine. There's a lot going on in this cover. A lot. Actually, I think an infant could beat me up right now. I'm a little weak. Thanks for joining me, guys. Issue number 41. And he drifts into a warm emptiness. And he does not ever want to return. I think that's the silver scarab in the doorway there. I can't remember. Can't remember. And this is a this in this run, this is the moneymaker right here. For all you speculators, Nostral Domus. This is issue number forty two. This is the first appearance of uh, I think it's the character Death. Alright. Cool cover. Love it. I got two copies, two copies. Like, they sell this thing for like 20 bucks, man. I swear to God. Uh, let's see. Issue number 44. Close the door. He's like, why? Issue number... F oh, I jumped to 52. What happened here? He's just chilling. Issue number 54. The return of Shadowstorm and the beginning of the Quantum Quest. That guy is freaky looking. Nice hairdo. Hey, Wolverine called. He's looking for his haircut. And here's our buddy Soups. And the Spectre. The Quantum Quest Part 2. Ostrander is writing. Red Tornado. Hawkman. Come on now. Come on now. Hawkman. And War of the Gods, all right? This is issue number 57. The end of Quantum Quest. Cool. Cool. Hold on. Hold on. Turn on your hot light. Let it shine wherever you go. Let's see here. I'll show you a little brightest day what I was telling you about Hawkman and Hawkwoman being in love. They're lovers. Someday, I would like to break down a lot of storylines. This is uh, volume one of Brightest Day. It was a, such a great story, man. A lot of Lantern, Martian, Manhunter. Black Adam stuff, Hawk and Dove. There's Hawk, man. Oh. Green Lantern and Sinestro Aquaman Ron Foss The Kraken There's Hawkman Alright So these are the guys They're stealing all the uh, old corpses Of their past lives all right, and uh, so they track him down. It turns out it's half set. All right, the guy that that kills him and puts him into the reincarnation cycle every time they have a life. All right, and uh, see, there's their bodies. They're like, "What is going on?" And he's wearing the claw of Horus, and it's guiding him to where he where half set is. So they're following the claw of Horus, and it's just great. Great stuff. This has set. It's got the corpse. Look at that, man, huh? And uh, they see all the, the death masks of their prior lives that has set made. And he gets all mad. He's like, I'm sick of this. We're going to break the cycle. He starts smashing them all. 
He's angry. What a great story. I forgot all about this black, blackest night, brightest day. Look at this. Look at this. So they track him down in the jungle. Right? All right, and look at the gate he made with all their skeletons, and he escapes through, and they go, all of them, from each and every one of our past lives, right? And uh, she's like, I don't know, but the claw of Horus sure as hell wants in, and I think I know why. I'm all ears. What are the two things missing from this gate? Khufu and Shaira's bones. Exactly. Carter, let's destroy this thing. This aberration. If Hasset is somewhere on the other side, maybe we can trap him there. Lock it from the, this end. Keep him away from the, us forever. What are you talking about, Shaira? Look at how far he's gone to try to destroy us. We will kill Hatset before he kills us this time. It's that simple. Simple is, simple is us obliterating this gate, Carter. Wiping it all away and getting on with our life. A life spent looking over my shoulder is not a life I want to lead, Shira. I want us to walk away while we have the chance. We are not giving up now, not now, when we're so close to finally putting an end to this once and for all. If that's your final decision, then I'll stand by it just as I've always stood by you. And they go in. Boom, boom. Dun, dun, dun. It's great. It's great. Love it. And they end up in this world here. Everything's floating. Right? Look at that. Come on. Come on. Just great. Ah. Oh, just great. Okay. Now we got stuff like Lion's Mane and stuff like that. All right. They get jumped by... Um, Every time they kiss, the, the blackest night type of thing happens to them. They get a little uh, creeped out. And then they get jumped. And they turn out... They're going to... They're going to team up because... That's what they do. These bird creatures attack are attacking those other animals, so... Hawkman teams up with the other Lion's Mane types to fight them, but Shira gets taken captive, and Hawkman is on a mission. He's going to crush. He's going to crush. He teams up with this white Lion's Mane type of guy. Oh, what a great story. Let me see this other one. Real quick. Real quick. This is volume two. Hawkman's looking for Shaira with the lion's mane guy. All right. Bring out the healer. Bring out the healer. And he, he finds the whole tribe of the lion's mane people. And he says, I see an army. That's what I see. Carter Hall taking charge. And Shaira is fighting for her life over here. She's like, Back to hell off. That's it, Shire. Tell him. So, there's this woman here. I forgot the storyline. I forgot what's going on. But she's looking for youth and vitality by killing these two or something. Something's going on. I can't remember. So, yeah, Green Arrow. I forgot all about the Green Arrow stuff in the park with Martian Manhunter. Good stuff. Dead Man. Check it out. Great stories. Aquaman.
Great stuff, man. I love this black hair. What's Hawkman doing? Here it is. This is my favorite page. He, they keep sending stuff after Carter. And he just keeps crushing people's heads. They're torturing Shira, right? And, uh... <laughs> Hawkman's just f flying through people, destroying... Attacking, destroying. And they finally tie her up. They tie her to the Stargate. And he's still battling, just tearing through people. Total savage Hawkman. And then he's like this. <laughs> They're like, we can't stop him. And he's like, Shayara! <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And she's like, Carter! Carter! He's got the claw of Horus. He's like, get away from her! Just trashing people. He's destroying things. Love it. And then he's getting... She controls his uh, mace, and the mace is attacking him. It's great. <laughs> Go to Hawkman's face. He's like, Argh. so, guys, go back and read this because it's fantastic. Look at Dead Man. What a great, great book, guys. Thanks for joining me, man. I'm sorry I don't feel good. I'll get better. All right, sing a little song. Let's bring a rap. We'll wrap it up. Wrap it up. Oh, yeah, baby. You're the best. I got a head cold. I don't care because I'm brave and bold. Joe Kubert is so wild. He treated me like a red-headed stepchild. I don't drink or smoke pot. I read my comics because they make me smart. Read your comics. They make you smart. I got to boil this thing.